I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to this wonderful day of worship and adoration. We welcome and greet everyone out there watching this broadcast. It is our prayer that God will pour out His blessings upon each and every one of us as we listen and meditate on God's Word. What a wonderful day this is. Although we cannot gather in one place, but all over the world, Christians are acknowledging and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, the Son of God, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a story of hope for humanity in a hopeless situation. Our world today is filled with hopelessness. We are fighting against an unseen enemy, coronavirus, and it is rapidly spreading and has already claimed over a million of lives across the globe. The number of infected and death toll are still rising even today as we speak. It is destroying almost everything that we care about, our business, our work, our job, our plans, our dreams, and our hopes, and even threatening to take away our lives. To date, the Philippines, in the Philippines we have millions of people who have either very low or no income at all because of this pandemic first time that we have this huge number of dispatch workers, closed establishments, and many families today are only dependent on the government's relief or financial assistance to survive in this lockdown and quarantine period. Our president had already warned us that if we will not cooperate and this pandemic will prolong for months, our resources might be drained and time will come that we will have nothing to give to the people anymore. And our economy can be worse than ever in the Philippine history. World leaders, and that includes a president, admitted that they are powerless on their war against this unseen enemy called COVID-19. And we ask this question today, is there still hope in this seemingly hopeless situation? I am reminded that what we need at a time like this is His Word and not just words. We need something that speaks of certainties not just a wistful thinking or empty promises. We need something that speaks of authority. We need the authoritative, assuring words, thus saith the Lord Almighty. We need something that provides hope in these trying times. Our passage this morning speaks of that hope that we so desire. I entitled my message today, Hope 
in a hopeless situation. Hope in a hopeless situation. And this is taken from Matthew chapter 28, 1 to 10. Let me read this passage for us. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. At this point, the disciples really needed encouragement after the crucifixion of Jesus. All their hopes seemed to seem crashing down with every blow that nailed Jesus to the cross. I want us to focus our attention on God's message through his angel that he sent. The first thing we find here is that the angel says, do not be afraid, for I know. The purpose why they came to the tomb was to anoint the body of Jesus, whom they thought was still there, whom they thought that Jesus was still dead. Now, I want you to notice also that the, the number of times the word fear appears in our passage this morning. Can you spot it? How many times? Did you count them? Now look at verse 4, verse 5, verse 8, and also verse 10. Four times the word afraid in this passage alone. Four times it is mentioned. Now what does it tell us? Think of the women. Think of how they felt at that moment, or what they felt when they made their way to the tomb. And how about the disciples who were hiding behind locked doors because of fear? Think of that. They had invested their lives. They had believed with all their heart that Jesus was the promised Messiah and the one that they should follow. They had believed in him that they left everything to follow him. Then suddenly, they witnessed Jesus horrible and most humiliating death on the cross. And the word that describes the emotion that gripped them at that moment was fear. Those of you who are watching, I know that many of you are experiencing the same or similar emotions because of this unseen enemy that's trying to destroy us. No one knows who will be the next victim. Just like the disciples were asking themselves, will I be the next? Will they come after me also? It is threatening our lives and those we love. Maybe it has taken away our job, our work, our daily income. Maybe it's now destroying the peace and the security that you and your family used to enjoy. And now you are not sure when this misery will be over. You are not sure what the future would look like for you and for your family. But I want to bring you God's message of encouragement and hope in our situation today. We serve 
a risen Savior. He is not dead. He is alive. And notice also at the end of this chapter, Jesus Christ assured his disciples and all of us, and behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. He is not just alive, but he will be with us. He will walk with us every step of the way, even to the end of the age. Notice also carefully that God said, what God said through the angel, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen just as he said. Do not be afraid. What is he saying to us? He wants us to stay calm. He wants us to have faith. Look at Mary. The angel showed up because God sent this angel. When the angel says, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for the crucified Jesus. I know that you are looking for a dead body. So I am right here to meet you. I know you came with that feeling of sadness, fear, doubts, confusion, and hopelessness. That is why I'm right here. I'm right here to take away those sad feelings so that you will go out of this place rejoicing rather than weeping. Friends, in the same way, he knows what you are going through right now and he cares. He wants to meet you where you are in your situation at this very moment. Think of these women. Well, they were on their way. They have these heavy hearts. The disciples were filled with fear behind locked doors. None of them, the disciples, the women, his followers, none of them expected that something to happen. But God, without their knowledge, when they were still in their sorrow, when they were still in their grief, when they were still in their fear and confusion and hopelessness, God was working behind. He was already doing something, and God has already performed miracle by raising Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, brothers and sisters, in the Lord. Whatever we face at this very moment, we might not see evidences yet. We might not see it in our own eyes around us. But I assure you one thing God is already working something for us behind. And one day we will just see it with our own eyes how God will work things together for our good. Don't be afraid. Why? Because He is faithful and He keeps His promises. Take note. The Bible says, He is risen just as He said. His followers have forgotten His promise when they were gripped with fears. How true is this also with us? When we are overwhelmed with our situation, it is as if we have hit the delete button, that we forget about everything, that we forget about God's promises. Maybe we still recite them, but it's so hard to reconcile what we believe and how we are feeling at this very moment. It's so hard to reconcile. That's why we are overwhelmed. But remember this. Never forget this. Never forget this. That He is a promise keeper. He is a miracle working God. He is alive. Before his death, he already made a promise to them that he will rise again. And very specific, he says that he is going after he would raise, he would raise from the dead. He would meet them in Galilee. Now this seemingly impossible promise are being fulfilled right before them. God will do the same in our life today. Another thing we should, why we should not fear is that the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead proves that God is sovereign and is in absolute control. The authorities thought that it was over for Jesus Christ. The enemy thought that it was over. 
Even his own disciples, the disciples of Jesus Christ, saw that everything was over for them. But see, in the midst of this hopelessness, God was sovereign and in absolute control. He raised Jesus Christ from the, from the dead. If he can raise his son from the dead, then I tell you, there is nothing, there is nothing our God cannot do. He can keep every promise that he made for us in his word. He promised here that he will meet all our needs. He promised here that he will protect and he will keep us safe. He promised that he personally would come and take us with him. He promised to walk with us every step of the way. He says again in this chapter, the last verse of this chapter, he says here, and lo, behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, it says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He will walk with us every step of the way. Do not be afraid, for he knows. Second thing that God says here, come and see. The angel invited Mary to look at the tomb, the empty tomb. He says, come and see where he lay. Now, the question is that, why did the angel roll away the stone? Jesus was already gone. Before the angel came, before, before Mary came, Jesus was not there already. He has already risen from the grave. But what? Why? Why did the angel roll away the stone? Jesus didn't need help. The stone was rolled away, not for Jesus to be able to get out, but for Mary and the disciples later to get in. So that Mary and the disciples will again have that sense of hope in the midst of hopelessness. They thought, because they thought that all was over now. They had seen the miracles, heard the message, and accepted him as the Son of God. But when they watched him nailed onto the cross, their faith and their hope crumbled. But here the angel says, Come and see the place where he lay. He is not here, he is risen from the grave. The empty tomb, also, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Is a vital part of the gospel message for a dead Christ cannot save the Bible says that if Christ did not raise from the dead then we are still in our sins our preaching our faith will be in vain and we are the most pitiful people in this world the empty tomb is a proof that he is alive the Son of God the Messiah come and see it's like saying to you and me today Come and see. Look at the evidence of God's power. Come and see. And look at the traces of God's working. Come and see. Open your eyes. And don't stay in your despair. The same God who raised Jesus from the dead is the same God we serve today. Don't overwhelm yourself with what you hear from the news. But overwhelm yourself with this good news. That He is risen, He is reigning, and He is returning for you one day. Come and see. It is also a reminder that life doesn't end with a grave. For those who do not know Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, they live in fear of death. Think of the millions that are spent on research and development that people can live longer. If scientists could just discover a way to guarantee that we would live longer, they could charge whatever price they want. And guess what? People would still pay for it. Especially this time, let me tell you a way that is free. Eternal life can be yours. Jesus said in John 11, 25 to 26, Jesus said, 
I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? For us believers of Jesus Christ, life doesn't end with a grave. First, don't be afraid, for I know, for he knows. Come and see. Evidences, traces of God's power. Come and see. There's hope. Third, go quickly and tell others. As for the minds of the disciples, Jesus was dead and all was over. They needed to be told that he had risen from the grave. And we need to do the same with all people today. Tell those believers today. Tell those who believe in Jesus Christ but are gripped with fears, worries, and even doubts because of our situation now. Or maybe because of their personal struggles in life. Tell them Jesus Christ is alive. Tell them of this message again and again. That we serve a living Savior. If you look at the empty churches today, you will be discouraged. But then visit again the empty tomb on this resurrection day and reflect what it means to us Christians. Then you will be inspired. Think of Peter who denied Jesus because of fear of his, for his life. Think of the other disciples now hiding in fear. They needed this message. That's why the angel says, go quickly and tell them. Guess what? When they heard about this message and seen this truth, they all gave their lives for the cause of Christ up to the end. Even that would mean a horrifying kind of death. They made it up to the end. They served God faithfully. Whatever your struggles today, remind yourself that He is alive. That He is absolutely in control of what's going on today. He is still on His throne. He has not given up His authority. He reigns. He rules today. If you really believe the resurrection, Jesus only expects us to do one thing. Go quickly and tell. Someone has said, any man who has a religion is bound to do one of the two things with it. Change it or spread it. If it is not true, he must give it up. And if it is true, he must give it away. Share it to others. Go quickly and tell. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God's marching orders for us today is still the same. Go quickly and tell. Why? Because every day people are dying. Not necessarily because of COVID-19, but that is the reality of life. Even today as I speak, someone is dying. Go quickly and tell. Why? Because every day people are being deceived. We are so quick to point people who are deceiving others. We are so quick on pointing false teachers, false prophets, false preachers, false doctrines. But are we also so busy snatching up people from the hands of these deceivers out there? People are being deceived every day. Go quickly and tell. Every day people are also desperate. They know nothing about the spiritual blessings that we are enjoying. They know nothing about the Savior that we have and about the peace that we have in the midst of, in spite of, in the face of difficulties and hardships and possibilities. If you are a Christian today, this passage of Scripture gives you a good reason or good reasons for you not to be afraid. There is hope even in this hopeless situation. When Christ rose from the grave, He already defeated for us this enemy's death. Remember what Jesus Christ said? I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet he will live again. For a believer, the grave has two holes, one coming in and one coming out. 
with the Father in heaven. Jesus Christ has also defeated also hell, the, pun the, the punishment of our sin. He defeated Satan and he defeated sin. We are already saved from, our, from the punishment of our sin, from the penalty of our sin, and from the power of sin today, we can overcome. We are not entangled. We are not under the control of sin anymore. We can overcome by His grace. And one day, when He will come to take us with Him, He will save us from the presence of sin. But if you don't have Christ in your life, then you have every reason to be afraid. Honestly, I have no words of hope for you if you turn your back on Christ Jesus. Death will have the final say in your life. But hear this word of hope. The invitation is still open. Jesus still invites you. Everyone. He invites everyone to come while there is time. Call upon his name, for there is no other name given by which we must be saved. Give your life to him, receive him as your Lord and Savior of your life. Then your life will never be the same again. The Lord bless us. And this year, we may be able to gather, come together and celebrate Resurrection Sunday. But God is meeting us in a very special way. Together in our homes, we are still in the Spirit. Together, we can celebrate in our homes, in our family, First Resurrection Sunday. A message of hope in the midst of hopelessness. The Lord bless us. Today, as you are gathered together as a family, we would like also to commemorate the Lord's suffering, His giving of His life on the cross of Calvary. And as we take this communion as a family, I would like to request your family to be together in one place, in the living room, or probably in the dining hall. And together, we will just remember Jesus. Jesus uses the occasion of the Passover to institute the new covenant. The old covenant that had been enforced since the law was given to Moses revolved around keeping rituals and symbolic sacrifices. These rituals and sacrifices look forward to the coming Messiah who would be God's perfect sacrifice. Now the new covenant, however, would look back to the finished work of the Messiah and that's what we will be doing here this morning. We remember what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross of Calvary. He says, do this in remembrance of me. Let's look at Jesus as he uses the Passover to teach us about his salvation. Let's learn from him as he institutes the Lord's Supper. I want us to open with me your Bible to Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 29. And like to read it for us, the word of the Lord says, Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. In this passage, I just want us to look at two things here. The first is that we see here the explanation of Jesus. Now, there are times when words are just not enough. In the Old Testament, some of the prophets used dramatic action to illustrate visually what they were trying to get across to their audiences. Let me mention a few. First, we have Ezekiel. He drew a picture of Jerusalem on a clay tablet and built a small enemy camp and siege works to illustrate the truth that Jerusalem would be attacked. And on other occasion, Ezekiel shaved 
shave off his beard and the hair of his head. And by the way, this was an outrageous act. No Hebrew man would do that. It was considered offensive to the people in that society. He took his hair and divided it into three. The first pile, he burned. The second, he struck it with a sword. And the third, he scattered it to the wind. This was a picture of the judgment that was about to fall on Israel. Jeremiah also made a yoke and he wore it around to illustrate the coming Babylonian captivity. Another prophet, and prophet Ahiha, tore his clothes 12 times or 12 into 12 pieces and gave 10 to Jeroboam, the son of Solomon, to illustrate the fact that God was about to take 10 tribes from Israel and form the northern kingdom. And that was the start of the kingdom of Israel was divided into two, the northern and the southern kingdom. This past over feast, Jesus combines words and symbols to communicate his truth to his disciples and to us today. The picture the pictures Jesus painted that they are powerful and they continue to speak to us today. Look, let's look at these symbols. First, we see here the bread. The Bible says that it was time to serve the bread. Jesus took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Eat all of you. Now, brothers and sisters in the Lord, Jesus added a new meaning to the bread when he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Jesus equated the unleavened bread with his human body. Jesus used this bread or used that bread that night to teach his disciples what he was about to do. He was on his way to the cross to lay down his life for our sin. He was on his way to the cross of Calvary where his body would be broken for you and me. Jesus wanted his men and to the rest of us to know that his broken body was more important than a piece of the living bread. He wanted us to understand that the only way to have salvation is to become part of him by receiving what he did on the cross. Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This is the truth that is worth remembering. And also, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink, all of you. Now, brothers and sisters of the Lord, again, Jesus Christ added a new meaning to the drinking of the wine. He said, This is my blood. The new covenant which is shed for many. Jesus equated the wine in the cup of his own blood which was about to be shed on the cross. All who believe in Jesus Christ for salvation have their sins washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Hebrews that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins. Another thing here, aside from this explanation of Jesus Christ about this symbol, is the expectation. Jesus tells his men, tells his disciples, he said, that I will not drink and you with you until that day when we will be in the, my Father's kingdom. Jesus went to the cross with the expectation that he would rise again. Go back to heaven and return to the earth. We praise the Lord that even before his death, he already gave that expectations that he would not remain in the grave, but he would rise again. He would go back to heaven and he would return to take us with him in glory. Friends, we are gathered together because Christ loves us. We are gathered together to remember Christ who gave his life on the cross of Calvary. 
And together now as a family, I would like to request all the head of the family. You may be the dad or the mom or the eldest in the family who is the head of the home. I'd like you to lead your family right now as we partake of the communion together. But before that, let us come to God in prayer. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your great love, for your amazing grace, Lord God, that you have shown to us. Thank you that because of your great love, you sent us your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Today, Lord, we remember your great sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And as we do this, Lord God, as we partake of these elements, fill our hearts with joy and gratitude. And there's, if there's anything, Lord, in our life today that displeases you, I pray, Father, that you would convict us and bring us to the point of repentance and make us worthy, Lord, to join this celebration together with our family. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now on the night when Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. Shall we partake together, remembering the body of Jesus Christ that was broken on the cross of Calvary for our sins? In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink, all of you, in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Shall we partake together? Shall we come to the Lord in prayer? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, how good and faithful you have been to us, Lord. You have met all our needs in this life and the next to Jesus Christ who gave his life for us. For us who are undeserving sinners, we are a people Indeed, Lord, richly blessed, children greatly loved, and so securely preserved. The death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, secures us in this life and the life to come. Even in the midst of pestilence, famine, even in death, nothing can ever separate us from your love to Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Him, we are more than conquerors. Lord God, we are we recognize, we recognize, Lord God, that you are in your mighty throne. You reign sovereign over the entire universe. And as your word declares, you are aware of its falling sparrow. You are conscious of every strand of hair upon our heads, Lord. So it is not difficult for us, Lord, to realize that you care about our world and this nation in these trying times. Father, Sovereign Lord, if it, if it be within your good pleasure, please, Lord, bless our country. Grant us victory in our fight against this destructive, unseen enemy, COVID-19. We ask you, Lord, to have mercy on our land. Forgive us of our wicked ways. Release us from this plague that has struck us. Lord, bless every individual and families in our church. Bless everyone and every family watching and joining us in this online sunrise service today. And now, brothers and sisters of the Lord, 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Morning and happy Resurrection Sunday, everyone. God bless.